Welcome to the MBS Show, episode 213. I'm your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Will. Greetings. Hello, Will. How are you doing? Oh, no. Doing well on this fine, beautiful spring day. It's spring? Really? Well, it is at least here. <laughs> the birds are singing, the wind is blowing, the sun is shining, all the no, snow is no, gone. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Oh, I wonder who could that be before we go to him. Uh, also joining us is Lurker Cat. Hey guys, I managed to lurk back on here. Yay, how are you doing? I'm doing good. What about yourself, Norman? I could be better, but I'm not complaining. And our guest for this week. Well, some may say that he's hot-headed, but I think he's just awesome. Introducing to you... I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm introducing to you guys, Commander Firebrand. Hello. I am Josh Gorcher, a.k.a. Fire Jerker, a.k.a. Firebrand, and I hate puns. Please. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> you apparently also hate spring. I am more of a winter person. Uh. Oh, heathen. <laughs> uh. Winter is so much better than summer. It's You're not sweaty in the middle of the night. It's, and, if you're, and if you're ever cold, you can just put on as many layers as you need. But in the summer, there's only so many layers you can take off. <laughs> well, well, That's why you take off your skin eventually. <laughs> what? Yep. I, I I don't really like the cold because even if you put on warm clothing, you still take damage. So, no. Still take damage? Do, what are you do doing, what I do, that, Norman? Well, do what I do. Hop around to get warm. Uh, true that, true that. So, before we officially start, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, favorite character? Oh. Shoot. Depending on what mood I'm in, it's always a toss-up between Rarity and Celestia. Ah, I see. I, I do know that you really love the Celestias by conversation with Sapphire and Silver Quill. And yeah, the Celestia is strong with you, but Rarity? Why Rarity? I see a lot, a little bit of myself in her. Well, well not really. I see a little bit of her, uh, her in me because, uh, we, we kind of both have this attitude of the world is our stage. Now, I personally like to fall off of it a little bit more for the giggles, but I kind of put on a show like with people that I, with that, with everyone that I talk to. It's, mm-hmm. I, I constantly feel like I'm on stage. I constantly feel like I have an audience. And there's a lot of her episodes that deal with the, uh, with the creative process. And as a creator myself, that resonates with me and that resonates with a lot of artists. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Like being the creative type and seeing rarity on screen or on the big screen is relatable. So as for Celestia, why? She's kind. She's patient. She's motherly. She's, she's all that. She's super helpful. She's intelligent. She's a, it's like you could, you could tell she's a, she's like a hyper strategist. And with all the shenanigans that goes on in Equestria, she had to deal with that alone for a thousand years. Who else could do that but Celestia? True that, true that. Despite all of the heartache and torture that she has gone through, she has still remained the great princess she is. Well, I, I bet she'll be good at civilization. That game takes patience. <laughs> no, no, oh uh, yeah, it's, I wish I had the patience for civilization, I mean... Uh, it says, you know, I try to be nice in that game, okay? I try to be nice. But, oh, but, so, but, that, it's, uh, I try to be like, okay, I gotta try and go for the diplomatic victory this time. And then I'm saying, Gandhi has declared war on you. <laughs> That's it! Everyone dies! Uh, Actually, when you really think about, when you really think about it, Celestia is Gandhi. <laughs> always peaceful, always nice, but the second you do something wrong, she up, up, utterly nuke, nukes you into death. With friendship. <laughs> Just like Gandhi. Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. This place is so aggressive. I know. Uh, you could always just turn down everything too easy. Mm. But, yeah, favorite episode? Favorite episode, Pinky Pride. Pinky Pride. Um, any reason why besides Where El? It was really funny. I liked the, I liked the message. Uh, there was just so much in that epi- there was just so much in that episode that really worked. The music, the music was really good and just everything worked about that episode. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the episodes. Well, besides the Weird L thing and well, Weird L, like, can you say anything bad about that episode? Weird L. Did you say yeah. you don't like Weird L? Who, me? Yeah. No, I didn't. I said, what can you not hate? It, Weird L's okay there. then. You get to live more. <laughs> Yay. 
Yeah, there's a lot of people who didn't like Weird Al's movie. Oh. Yeah, and so it got it got critically panned, and, and Weird Al was a little distraught about that. Uh, here's oh. the thing, I, I, Sweetie Bot may need to come in, but that's not a word. Them, UHF is awesome. Whoa, language. <laughs> Thank you, Captain America. <laughs> No, UHF is one of those classics that is really stupidly funny. It's good. But it came out during the time where another awesome blockbuster came out. Was it Indiana Jones? Was it? I think. I forgot. Uh, who knows? But I think we can all say that he who is tired of Weird Al is tired of life. Exactly. Yeah, indeed. So how did you become a fan of the show? How is it that I became a fan of the show? I love telling this story. <laughs> okay. <Ooh. laughs> I mean, love listening to it. I first uh, experienced the ponies in while I was in boot camp. In fact, the very first episode aired while I was in boot camp. And then when I got when I got back from uh, all the all the boot camp stuff, I started seeing all these memes and references on the internet to the show. And I thought it was just a I thought it was just a 4chan's latest fad. And uh yeah, I was kind of half right. <laughs> but anyways, um that just kept seeing it more and more people, more and more references until one of my friends who had particularly particular standards. It was very strange. This particular friend had very strange standards and stuff that I didn't understand. And he said he liked the show. And I'm thinking, okay, if he likes this, I got to see what's up. So I, I watched an episode and I, and I have to say, I kind of was probably hooked from the, uh, very first line of the episode. It was, a, it was a in the magical land of Equestria. I'm like, wait a minute. Latin root Equestria means land of horses. <laughs> Are they putting effort into this? Are they putting freaking effort into this? <laughs> All right. And then just kept, just kept go, just kept going. I saw more and more episodes. I kind of joined at around the time. Uh, I kind of I kind of say I like caught up with the show around uh, the time of Luna Eclipsed. Oh, okay. That's when I officially caught up. And that's also kind of the point where I, where I was like, I have to talk to someone about this. But I couldn't because I was in a military environment and everyone was say, and, you know, military is macho. You're not, you're, not, you're not allowed to talk. It's not that you're not allowed to talk about it. It's just that it's uh, probably not a good idea. <laughs> You will be mocked endlessly. Yeah, and even and even then, I still made I, I still made the review anyway. Started talking about it, and here's what happened: it was a normal morning muster in formation, and all of a sudden it's like Lance Corporal Burner report. <laughs> when they say that, that means that usually means you're in trouble. Oh wow! Well. And then I'm thinking, Yikes. oh no, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> it's at face level two. As you all know, Lance Corporal Burner has shown incredible bravery. In watching My Little Pony. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and then I'm just thinking, uh, wait, wait, hang on a second. They all know. They all know I reviewed the episode. They all saw the review. Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, this is delicious. <laughs> In commendation of his bravery, we bestow upon him a brony shirt. This is it. This is your and yeah, it's they gave it. They gave me the shirt, and I'm just, I am just fuming with embarrassment. <laughs> oh wow, well, okay. Better than a crab. All throughout the day, people were were people were telling me, "Ha ha, you're a brony," and I just told them. Shut up, I'm famous. <laughs> but, but I don't think that's bad, right? Like, okay, they know, but how do they know? It's a thing in the military. We call it the uh, Lance Corporal Underground. Mm -hmm. Somehow, information passes really, really quickly among the Lance Corporal Underground. If there's just one rumor, one whisper, every Lance Corporal will know about it within the next second. It's really, really weird. And so one person found out about my review, and then they all knew about my review. <laughs> so okay, uh, here's the thing I want to ask: like, when where did you do the review? Like, was it uh, on the YouTube's on your own personal channel? Uh, yeah, it was on my personal channel on YouTube. It was uh, <laughs> just talked about the first two episodes, made fun of them a little, and uh, oh. interesting days. 
Oh, wow. Because I need to get into that for a bit later on. But what do your family and friends think about your love for said show? Everyone else doesn't get it. They support me, but they don't get it. My dad's a little apathetic. I can tell my mother's a little disappointed. Uh, but they're all supportive. It's a disappointed in a, in a, like a not, in a not bad way. It's, it's just my mom, my mom doesn't get it. Well, at least you're not a Trekkie. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> oh no, my, oh okay. no, my, oh no, that's, no, my dad's a Trekkie. Oh. Oh. You think he would understand she, then? The thing is, is that th- this is something that my mother has come to accept about <laughs> our families. That my dad is a massive nerd, you know, like Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, uh, Star Trek, all of that stuff. And she's come to accept that all of her children have inherited the nerd gene. <laughs> Oh god. The nerd is strong. Oh wow, the nerd gene. And she and she 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 supports us, she loves us, but she is I can tell she's very uncomfortable with a lot of it. Yeah. Well, at least it's not anime. Uh that fell flat. Like anime. <laughs> oh wow. Anyway, uh your friends? My friends. Uh I don't have any friends. Oh. Oh, we shall be your Don't friends, us. and we can judge you. Yay, friends! <laughs> no, it's just, it's uh, well, the thing is, is that um, my friends, uh, I I don't have a lot of offline friends. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure I don't have any offline uh, any offline friends that I regularly speak to. I mean, all my friends are all my friends are online. The thing is, is that uh, I'm not a very I'm not a very outgoing person. I'm not I am like hyper introverted and I prefer having a small group of close friends that I like to speak to. Mm. Mm. All right, understandable. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. You could you wouldn't be able to tell that by your personality, you know. Oh, definitely not. <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, yeah, I know I sound, I know I sound like an, I know I perform like an extrovert, but no, it's just, I, I am hyper introverted. I am actually painfully, excruciatingly shy. It is very, very hard for me to start conversations with people I don't know. It's like the only way I can get comfortable talking to people or be, or being in front of a crowd is performing. Mm. Because that energy just completely negates my, uh, shyness. Yeah, and then it'll be a show. And I'm just glad that, well, you start talking to me because, um, I, the way I got your contact was, oh, I want to interview Firebrand. How do I do it? I know, I'll ask Silver, I'll ask Silver Quill how to get in touch with him. Hey, Silver, how do I get in touch with Firebrand? You know, maybe an email or a link to his, you know, whatever place in contact should be. Nope, he just sent me a friend request. Like, what? <laughs> like direct contact like what okay is he cool with this uh no answer you know what okay i'll just try if he answer he answer he's not no guess uh, then you did uh, i'm glad <laughs> thank you so anyway um we've been talking and you mentioned well you're in the military and stuff are you still in the military no no i've been out for about a year and a half ah all right then so i've noticed that you you're holding the FOP Equestria channel. Yeah. So how did that happen? Because I remember way back when in 2013 that um, Captain Sonterhoof and Captain Mich- Michael something like that were holding yeah uh, Michelle or holding the channel. So how the change and I'm confused. The channel started because uh, every military brony has thought they were the only one. Because ah. military and girls cartoon, they kind of don't mix. Anyways, uh, uh, and when it came up to BronyCon, we realized, when it came up to BronyCon, there was a military brony luncheon and we saw how many bronies there were and how lonely we all felt. We were like, we have to, we have, we have to come together. We have to make a website. We have, we have to, we have to make a YouTube channel. We got to do all this. And that you did. I remember the meet, meet and greet with Tara Strong that you did in, I don't know what restaurant was it, but that was cool. Talking to them, that was a while back now, and well, so uh, you took over the channel, or did they hand it over to you, or how was it? Uh, I just I just uploaded it. I just uploaded videos on there because no one was. Ah, so basically you're one of the content providers then? Yes. Alrighty then. You mentioned earlier before every military brony feels like they're alone, but not really because you have each other. Like you guys are all over the place. 
Well, we, at first, it's like when you first discover the show, that's when you feel the most alone. Because then you're like, oh my gosh, I must be the only one that likes this. But it seems you're not. So were you there during um, the con that shall not be mentioned? I was not there. Uh, the the FOB was there. They uh, did their best. They, they were very, very good at, you know, fix and uh, salvaging as much as they could from that one. But, oh my gosh. <laughs> Because I do oh, remember gosh. that uh, um, since that con kind of, well, t- let's just say um, sank, they took over security duty. So that's cool. But enough about them. Enough about Forbes in general. We're interviewing you now. So yeah, you do a review show on Forbes, right? Uh, yes, and also on my personal channel. What do you talk most? Like, I do notice that it's mostly reviews and mostly discussion about the new episodes or the element bearer, which was a good um, listen to. So what do you do besides that? On my personal channel, I actually review a lot of video games. I got about 100,000 subscribers, and it's a lot of fun. It's like mainly countdown videos. I also do do Let's Plays. I'm also working on a uh, dub for uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. And, uh, I also, I also stream uh, on Twitch every evening at, from 8 to 10. And I do see here that you also play Magic the Gathering. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so my Magic site's coming out, but when did you start playing Magic, or what do you play? Uh, when I, when did I start playing Magic? I started playing Magic, like, about six months ago when my friends when my friend and brother started introducing me to the game <laughs> via its uh, lore and philosophy. I didn't start playing it for a, for a while, but um, I sl- I slowly got into it. The more I found accessible what, ways to talk, to talk about it, and then I just started hearing a whole bunch of... Then I just started hearing music, certain songs, and I'm like, you know, this song would really fit a particular organization in Magic the Gathering well. And then I just started p- p- picking up a lot of artwork and then just started sending them to music. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's actually pretty cool. And then people loved it and they asked me to do more of them. I see. I need to take a listen to this because I play the Magics also and it's been a while. I think it's been oh, what, almost a year and a half now I started playing. So yeah, it's addicting, but I don't have the money for it. <laughs> I noticed on your personal channel, you have uh, Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. Yes. What did you make of that game, then? Oh, it's one of my top ten favorite games of all time. Mm. Awesome. One of mine as well. What's your favorite Disney character out of all them? Out of all of them? Yes, so I, all of them. Like the, in Kingdom Hearts 2 or in just in general? Just in general. Or, in, you know, whichever ones you liked in the game as well. I'm open to any answer. Hmm. Well, in the in the game, I liked Aladdin because he was the most useful. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, Goofy and Donald will let you down. God damn it, Donald! <laughs> so Aladdin was super useful because all of his attacks release drive gauge orbs, and <laughs> you kind of need those in order to gra- grind drive gauges. It's just so easy. such a useful person. Anyways, um, my favorite Disney character in general. I don't know. I never really thought. Never really thought about that one. Well, if you can't think of a good character, what about at least a Disney villain you prefer the most? Oh, that would be easy, surely. I got—I don't know. I'm gonna have to get you back on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna have Come to get on. back to you on that one too. Yeah, the, uh-huh. the, the Disney villains in the Kingdom Hearts series are a lot. I, I think top billing for me would go for Maleficent because, well, she can turn into a dragon. Why not, right? Of course, of course. Are you excited for Kingdom Hearts three? Of course I'm excited for Who Kingdom Hearts 3. Who isn't excited? I don't know. I'm excited for Kingdom Hearts 3, but I just want to, I just want to strangle the creator right now. Why? Oh, because of, be because awesome. of 2.8 Hyper Read Mix <laughs> HDX or something? <laughs> can you end the series already? <laughs> can, can we get, can we get something in the main series, can we get something in the main series and not have to, uh, buy that five different systems just to experience the story. Yeah, that's what turned me oh, off to Kingdom Hearts, really. Like, I played one, and then, like, was very happy, learned there was Final Mix, bought that one, was happy, and then there was Part 2, yay, finally. And then, in between Part 1 and 2, there was the Chain of Memory series, and, like, ah, I need to buy a Game Boy. Oh, I don't have money for a Game Boy. I'll emulate it. 
And the, the whole thing goes on, like, oh, the PSP version, the PS Vita version. And I just gave up. <laughs> you have to be rich in order to actually follow the entire storyline. Actually, I think you even need a flowchart to even follow the storyline. Okay, this character is connected to this character, which is back in time. <laughs> and this is a prequel, sequel, and a midquel at the same time that this story is going on. Oh, gosh, so true. <clears throat> I know. You're not even joking. No, it's like legit. Uh, that would turn me off. I mean, a video game can have its depth, but doing that is just totally confusing. But yay, Kingdom Hearts X3, you're excited for it. So I'm guessing you have a PlayStation 4 then. Uh, yes, I do. Ah, so what game have you been playing on it? Like, uh, I, I don't really know what games you're into anyway. I, I play a lot of stinking, um, uh, hack and slashes. Like, uh, Dynasty Warriors, uh, or beat em ups like Oscar's Wrath, all those. And do you play Devil May Cry? Uh, yes. Uh, that's a confusing story, but still good. Hmm, PS4 and hack and slashing. Does that mean you might be a fan of Bloodborne? Uh, no. <laughs> oh. Bloodborne is good. For shame. But I think Josh here likes the more easygoing kind of hack and slash like Devil May Cry and so on. The Warriors game of uh, the one where you... um, I don't know. Devil May Cry is a, Devil May Cry can be brutal. <laughs> yeah. I was just about to say, Norman, that wasn't easygoing. I remember when I first started Devil May Cry and it kicked my ass. It literally handed it back to me and went, no, try again. At least it doesn't taunt you by saying, you die, come get your soul back. Half the fun is the masochism of the whole thing. We're going off ponies. I, I need to re- reel it back into ponies <laughs> for a bit. Reel it back in. Yeah, <laughs> try to at least. I noticed that you primarily do videos. So how do you do them on? Like, do you do them on Premiere or Sony Vegas? I do them on uh, Magic's Video Pro X5. Ah, huh, that's interesting because you're using the same thing as Manga. And the audio, I'm, I'm guessing also on the Magic, right? Actually, I use Audacity. Oh, I'm using that now. Yay. <laughs> Very good program. Yeah, it's a good free program that works. Talking about videos and the music, how do you do your work in terms of scripting and whatnot? That's a, well, that's a difficult question to answer because um, I just, I guess I just kind of do it. <laughs> okay, let's just uh, take your review of QD Remark. How do you How's the process for that one? The cutie remark. Um, I don't know. So uh, I just did it. No, no script writing. No finding the people to do it. Recording time and whatnot. I just did it. <laughs> All right. It's just in George Scotcher is actually a child of. <laughs> just do it then. Uh, alrighty then. Okay. Well, then, what would you say would be the most difficult thing for you when creating your videos? Is it the coming up with the jokes? Is it the finding the right pacing? Something like that. Like, what would you say is the most it, challenging for you? Uh, it had to be. It has to be the uh, the uh, working with the blank canvas. The start is always not easy. Talking about the start not being easy, I got no good segue. So you guys remember the music <laughs> magic inside? It got nominated for an Emmy. Well, they lost to the bromance from the series All Hail the King. Yeah, I haven't heard the song yet, but I think it's good if it lost. So, yeah. But no problem because the show got nominated for uh, Leo Awards. So, three of them to be exact. Um, one for Do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep for Best Sound. Then Ingram is up for Best Score for... Crusaders of the Lost Mark, and Ashley Ball has been nominated for Best best Performance for Thanks for the Memories. So, yay, hope they win. Yeah, hopefully Ashley Ball gets something. That was a pretty good performance in that whole thing. <laughs> hope they all do mm-hmm. good, because it's a pretty awesome series. Any, any awards for a show is a good sign. Even nominations. Even Yeah, even nominations, man. It means that people have been paying attention. Yeah, remember when Beauty and the, and the Beast was animated for uh, best? What was nominated for best animated mm-hmm. feature? Yeah, did it win? Mm-hmm. That, was, that was huge. I thought it, I think it win, right? It was, it was, no, it was, I mean it was nominated for best picture. Yeah, and then it and started I, an animated car- uh, category. Did it not? Or am I remembering that incorrectly? Yeah, it's because we all know that the Academy Awards wants to snub anything that's animation, yeah. and that's why you get some other things. That's the thing about the Academy. It's they have they have very particular tastes. I I stopped taking them seriously once they uh, nominated Hurt Locker. Pleb to your taste. And the academies are run by people we got no idea, and I think people are complaining about them. But eh. and talking about awards, I see that you also got the silver YouTube button. Yep. Congratulations! 
Nice one. Oh, thank you. Uh, I wish I could get the button someday. Uh, we all wish we could. Yeah. <laughs> one day, Norman. One day. Yeah. No, one day, Norman, you'll have the platinum button. How? Then you could be super diva. Uh, how does that even work? I don't think the popular ones, like Markiplier or that screamy guy got that platinum button. Screamy guy? Is that PewDiePie by any yeah. chance? <laughs> no, that, that's how great it will be, is that probably Scor- Scorcher here or you will be the first to ever create the platinum button. One where you just take over all of YouTube. <laughs> they hand you the, the source code to the yeah. website, saying, How'd take you over. Get a crown and a scepter? Yeah, and at the same time they say, good luck! And with that we get all the complaints. <laughs> Uh, like dealing with the automated processes. Nah, I think they gotten something in between because uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. So Josh, um, I see here that you have a lot of, well, I won't say a lot, but a few of Nintendo's videos. Do I dare say that you have a Wii U? Yes. Ah, yes, a Wii U buddy. Yay! That means you played Bayonetta too. No. Ah, I would have thought that you would. So what have you been playing on the Wii U's? Uh, Smash, Splatoon, Mario Maker. Oh. Ah, the big ones. Yeah, yes. I I played Splatoon too. I played Smash. Smash is good. Uh, playing as Cloud was interesting. <laughs> you do collapse often, right? Lately, no. Oh, any reason? I don't know. Just uh, I haven't uh, talked with a lot a lot of people who I've, I'm interested in working with. Yeah, you only want to do collabs with people you think it mesh well, or at least uh, jive well when it comes to the entertainment purpose. Yes, because so many people... I've actually gotten this as a request before. It's like, hi, you don't know me, and you don't know whether I'm good, or you and you have no idea, but I st- and you have no idea whether or not I'll be good for you, but I'll still be... A, do a col- I still want to do a collab with you. And they have, like, one Ouch. video. And they have one video, am I right? They have no videos. I'm like, oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> oh. And it just really sucks because whenever you reject these guys, you end up looking like a bad guy. Yeah, but at the same time, too, you need to take care of your brand, your reputation and whatnot, and have to weed out the person that's just wanting you to be in the video because you're famous. Plus, you also don't want to be doing all the work yourself. That depends on the person, too, because if that's the first time that the person is doing a video then the quality would be not as good or up to your standards. So we got two more types for the news, I believe. Hmm, yes, indeedy. You want to take them? Okay, well, I guess this one we're going to have to be a little bit sad. Well, mum's the word. Because I happen to know how Mr. Scorcher here does not exactly like spoilers. Hmm. Or are, 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 or are you ambivalent about them right now? I still don't like spoilers. So. All right, then we will do, then we will not talk about the specific spoilers, but just say that there were spoilers, specifically movie spoilers released, and it seems like wherever major sites they were posted on, Hasbro immediately covered them up, saying, "Well, hey, don't post these." So they took them down. So the question is, were these real or were these fake, and they were just protecting their brand? And if they were real, were they just trying to hmm, stave off the hype, or they or were these? Uh, leaks themselves exclusive information that was only supposed to be given out at the convention that it was. Well, it could, it, got, it could honestly go either way. I mean, if you talk about, if you, uh, lo- if you look at, it, it kind of takes what Hasbro a while to, uh, to react to things, uh, something, something, uh, something, something fighting against magic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it takes them a little while to react to something and, I'm thinking that um, they were looking at something and they said uh, they're, they have, like, people who are looking for any mention of the of the My Little Pony movie and they they wanted to they wanted to crack down on that whether or not whether or not it was real. And don't don't quote me on that because I don't exactly know what what was going on. That's just my theory. Mm. It does. Signs do point to they took it down because it was part of their movie. <laughs> signs do point to that, but I wouldn't I wouldn't make any assumptions, it, even though it does point to that. I mean, you know how a lot of these other countries are with their they're they're very very loose with their laws. Oh, yeah. uh, I re- I remember I remember seeing uh, Star Wars Episode Three uh, in Kenya a week and a half before the worldwide premiere. Well, talk about that. I just watched Civil War a few weeks ago. Yeah, but I think for this one, 
personally, um, there were just announcements about the movies, uh, about what's going on and what to expect and whatnot. And this was announced at a Russian convention called Pony Radio Con. And uh, one of the Hasbro rep was there talking about the toys, merchandising, and also, well, a bit of movie news. Huzzah! If you want to know, well, it's available online just if you want to see what's happening. But we're not going to talk about it because it's spoilers. And the policy for this show is we do we do not talk about spoilers. Unless it's in the review show, then that's another story. But um, for this one, nah, we, we tend not to talk about spoilers. I'm curious what Mr. Scorcher wants in the movie himself. Like, what are you, what, what would you want to be in the movie? What would really entice you to it? I want something about Celestia. Please, <laughs> for the love of all that is holy. You know what? I kind of agree because we haven't seen any stories about the two sisters in general. Like... They, where do they came from? What we, what can we expect? What, uh, where this court comes into the picture? Blah, blah, blah. And you know what? The big screen is the best place to, well, highlight this. Bet you they only get a 30 seconds worth of screen time. <laughs> uh, knowing has wrote, yes. <laughs> oh, well. Well, okay, so, enough about the movie. The last mm. thing is apparently, uh, have we really turned into a gossip rag? Is that, is that is that what EQD and everyone else has turned into? Is this like what celebrities are up to? Because everyone is now freaking out about Selena Gomez sporting a vinyl scratch tattoo. Right oh on my her gosh, are we serious? <laughs> yes, we are serious. <laughs> but here's the, here's the kicker. After a bit of research, I have concluded actually that this tattoo is actually a temporoni, t- temporary My Little Pony tattoo. But again, this could also just be one heck of a very, very clever Photoshop. But... EQD wasn't the only place freaking out about it. But who knows? It's Selena Gomez, guys! I know, but still, it would be fun to have her on. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, that bad, eh? I mean, but still, it would be fun to have her on the show doing something. Yeah, it's maybe call for attention from Hasbro, because uh, Rupert Grimley? uh, Who was the guy who played Ron Weasley? Rupert Grinch. Yeah, Rupert Rupert Grinch, yeah. Rupert Grinch, he is a brony. And has really just need to get his number, and yay, we got him on. The okay, show. yeah, I'm a, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, about this. Um, okay, um, this is, there's this thing that a, a lot of people have this have this mindset. Um, it's like particularly particularly amongst uh, Bible Belt Christians, and I can say that because I am one. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a, there's this mindset among amongst Bible Belt Christians that if you're if you're a celebrity and you're a Christian, that suddenly makes you the perfect person. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh All right. What? And so, it's a lot, a lot of us Bible Belt Christians really love to, uh, we really, we really love to, to like look at, look, look up, it's like, is Will Smith a Christian? Is <laughs> any of, is, is like Taylor Swift a Christian? Is a George Clooney part of the Illuminati? Or... <laughs> wow. George Clooney part of the Illuminati. Now that sounds like a good concept. Yeah, but anyways, it's, and when someone, anyone mentions like, any celebrity mentions something about God, it's a, a lot of us really like to leap on that and say, <laughs> They must be Christian, and then it's that, uh, and it's oh gosh, and uh, and I think bronies are kind of the same way. We like to leap on something and say, "Oh my gosh, a celebrity likes an MLP. That must be it's a you validate my existence. You're a celebrity. <laughs> you validate my existence." It's, well, that's what people do already with regular celebrities. Of oh, this celebrity likes chocolate pudding. I <laughs> like chocolate pudding. That validates my existence as well. <laughs> oh well, we, we, know, we but... can be we can be Uh, well, my logic to reason for this one is just that Rupert is an actor and Hasbro has a show. Eh, you know, it will be logical for Hasbro to contact them if they want to do something with. The show since they are interested. That's how we got Lena Hall, and that's how we got Wirel. So, yeah, logic seems to dictate that. So, who knows, right? <laughs> or maybe I'm just talking out of my butt. Well, hey, eh, who knows? It would, it, hey, it would be interesting to have her on the show. I mean, who knows? Who knows what she would voice as? I mean, 
I can't remember off the top of my head any of her acting credits, and that's a shame for me, but who knows? I only know Could Selena be. Gomez from Wizards of Waverly Place. That was, wow, Disney Channel classic. Sorry, but when you say Disney Channel classic, the only thing that goes through my mind is even Stevens. Well, a bit of a generation behind you, I bet. Yeah, I mean, I, I know you're gonna both. He did the a robot thingy with explosions. <laughs> I, I know that show. What was it called? Yeah, me love, me love explosions. Yes, I see your user icon is very explosive. Just please don't explode this show when we leave. Please, we like it in one piece. True that, but anyway, there's, there's news time. Josh, is there anything that you want to talk about, bring up, or discuss? Because that little rant you had there was interesting. Maybe you have more. Uh, what little rant? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I go on so I go on so many rants I can't keep track of them. Okay. <laughs> I, you, I you, know could, this you probably should just record. Probably should just record yourself, and then you could actually just sell Firebrand's rants only for nineteen ninety nine on DVD and Blu Ray. Uh, well, we could talk. Well, today today's episode, um, it's a wonderful episode that's actually good, and I didn't immediately despise. True that, but it was really cringy. It was a. It was it was funny. I thought it was mm. funny. Yeah, it, it was funny, like how Spike sang. <laughs> yeah, they'd be sort of watching an, a, a miraculous train wreck, and you can't look away. <laughs> yeah. Those are the best kinds. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that is true. That is true. But uh, if you're interested, Josh, we could bring you on for the review show to talk about that one because. Um, Silver will be there, Sapphire will be there, and we have a dedicated time slot to just blabber about that episode. It'll be cool. It'll be cool. If we don't have anything to bring up, I think we can close it down for now. Mm, nothing that wouldn't just delay this, the inevitable. Mm, true that. Oh, Will, you have a drawing, right, you're doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing one for this uh, thing, so you'll actually see it at the end. Heck, you know, I'll just send you the rough right now, Firebrand, so you can just see where it's at. I started, I started right as we started conversation. And I'm gonna have to add in little, uh, little Miss Lurker Cat here if she has a character as well. Because it looks good, it looks good. But anyway, while you do the whole processing thing, I can end the show. And Josh, thank you for coming on, man. You're welcome. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. Sweetie, but we'll talk about this episode, retweet this episode, and we'll also announce when this episode is out. You can also reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. Currently tickling my fancy is... Huh, I got no idea... It's strange. Probably Civil War. I watch it. It's fun. And <laughs> Will, where can they catch you, man? Hey, you guys can find me on DeviantArt, on uh, DeviantArt, Film Fiction, and uh, the Tumblr, I guess, <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> uh, Tumblr. Tumblr's not a bad place. It, it's full of the arts and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. sure. Just let's not mention the other seedier, the seedier side of the whole place. Yeah. Well, th- that's like almost like what? Um... That's every fandom. Uh, true that. That's every. It's just, it's just that Tumblr has a lot of... It, Tumblr has special snowflake syndrome more than <laughs> everyone else. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what, it, that's what it was like for Live Journal back in the 90s and then oh, Blogger in the <laughs> early 2000s. Live Journal. Everyone was a special snowflake and everyone's oh. entries were important. Oh, uh, you, you had... Oh, Live Journal's old. Like, I remember, um, Friendster. Wow. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's oh really gosh. Cool. Please and don't then, remind me of Friendster. Then MySpace, like, ooh. <laughs> oh, MySpace. Oh, wow. But Lurka, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt. The same name. Alrighty. So, okay. Alrighty then. And Josh, where can the people find you? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel at Josh Scorcher, and you can find the final, also find me at the Fab Equestria channel. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Josh Scorcher. You can find me on Tumblr at Josh Scorcher. You can find me on DeviantArt at Josh Scorcher. You can also find me on Twitch at The Frozen Cynic. No, just Josh Scorcher. <laughs> <laughs> All righty then. So Josh Scorcher everywhere then. All righty then. Scorcher has taken over the internet. Yes. That, that's his plan. Like, we're just part of it. You mean I'm a pawn? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're at least a knight. Norman's a bishop. <laughs> Me? Why? Oh, the bishop. That's hilarious. Uh, because, oh, wow. and because knowing you, you can only move diagonally. 
Oh, not the other reason. Alrighty then. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also, like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. You can also catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. Links will be in the show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. This has been Will. Hi, Zen. I've been the Lurker Cat. I have, always have been, and always will be, Josh Scorcher. And we'll catch you guys next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. So, guys, see you next week. See ya. See you later, folks. Bye.